Hello my lovelies! Today I have my top 10 of 2022 for you, so stay tuned! Hello my lovelies! So, as I said, I have my top 10 for 2022 here. And I can say as far as physically having the book on hand, I have six out of the 10. The other four are somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where because my shelves are not all put together yet. Well, they're put together, but the books are not organized yet. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'll just put a picture up or something whenever I get to a book that I don't have it in front of me right now. So in my top 10, I have two graphic novels, two middle grade, five YA, and two adult. So jumping right in with number 10, I have Wonder by RJ Palacio. I finally got around to reading this this year and it was so freaking cute uh, and sweet and wholesome. It's about this boy who, he was born with uh, facial deformities and he's had all these surgeries and stuff and he's been homeschooled his whole life pretty much and um, he's finally going to go to regular school in elementary school and he's worried his family's worried about the bullying and all of that and it's just it's so precious and I'm not gonna say my ratings for all of these because I can just tell you now they're all five stars okay so throughout 2021 and 2022 uh, I was reading all of the different Rick Riordan books and it might be odd that this one is my favorite because it's not actually one of the stories uh, but one of the extra books and that's Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes uh, and this is by Rick Riordan but the art is by John Rocco and I absolutely loved this. Like, it was funny. It was informative. You know, it told you about all these different uh, gods and goddesses, but in a very fun, relatable kind of way. And I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So number eight is one that I don't have right here in front of me. I'm not sure where it's at. It must be packed still, or I accidentally put it on a different shelf. But uh, this is one that my dear friend Kehlani gifted to me when I was there visiting her. And uh, I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. And that is Saga Volume 1. And I can't recall what the author's name is. But it follow it's a graphic novel. It follows two people from like warring planets, warring species, and uh, but they found love and they have a baby and they're just trying to stay together and, and have a happy little family but both sides are kind of wanting to rip that apart. And again, it was funny, it was entertaining, it was action filled and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, so number seven is another book that was gifted to me. And this one is also uh, sort of a graphic novel, but more of like art collection. Uh, I don't really know how to describe it. But that is A Book Love by Debbie Tong. This is like a bunch of little bookish comics. And it's so freaking cute. Like, it captures all of the bookwormy goodness and I, I just it's fabulous I highly recommend it and any book lover is going to love book love okay so I don't think I could actually have a top 10 without having at least one book by this author so for number six I have the red scrolls of magic by Cassandra Clare uh this it's the the story of Magnus and Alec and they're trying to have this whole romantic vacation getaway um, but it's not really working out very well and there's like this cult that is summoning demons and um, they say that Magnus is the leader and <laughs> this was so much fun like I, I just I love Cassandra Clare's writing so much this was such a great time Number five on my top 10 list 
comes from an author that was actually one of our Seasonathon authors. And well, this was the group book for that Seasonathon. And I was expecting to like it, but I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I ended up loving it. Like, I devoured this book and I was like, I'm anxiously waiting for the next in this series because so good. And that is The Sunbearer Trials by Aiden Thomas. Uh, this follows a group of essentially demigods and they are selected for the Sunbearer Trials. Like not all of them. It, it's kind of randomly selected. And Teo is what they call a jade. And Jades are never picked for the Sunbearer Trials, so he's not worried about getting selected, but his best friend is a gold. And golds are trained pretty much their entire lives to compete in these Sunbearer Trials. And the winner of the Sunbearer Trials carries a light and life to all of the temples, but the loser of the Trials um, becomes a sacrifice, and the winner has to kill the loser. I forget how many people compete, but for the first time ever, not just one, but two jades are selected. Teo and also, uh, I forget what his name is off the top of my head, but he's like the son of the god of bad luck. And yeah, I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so book number four is one that uh, one of my coffee patrons actually wanted me to read. Um, my coffee patrons, one of the perks that all of the tiers get is that they get to tell me any book at all that they would like for me to read and I put it in my little coffee cup and that's something that stays on my wheel of TBR so that I, I, I can select those often. And uh, Christina uh, at one point in time selected the Stardust Thief and I forget what the author's name is. Chelsea Abdullah and I believe this is a debut novel and I actually just got this as a Christmas gift and I have apparently stuck it on a shelf already and now I, my shelves aren't organized. <laughs> I can't find it but I literally just got it and uh I absolutely adored this book. I want the rest of the series as soon as it comes out. It's it's kind of a mix to me of like The Forty Thieves and Aladdin and um, Arabian Nights and all of that together. And it follows Luli Al-Nazari. Uh, she is the Midnight Merchant and she secretly has a Jin bodyguard and people are hunting the Jin and the Sultan blackmails her into hunting for this lamp and he wants to trap all the Jin and oh, so good so so good okay so book three on my list oh we're getting to the top here y'all book three is another book that I don't physically have in front of me. I don't know where it's at. It's on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> Probably in my master bedroom, but all of those books are like currently sitting like this on my shelves. So I can't tell what anything is. Uh, but Spelled is by Betsy Chow and it is like a Wizard of Oz kind of retelling and Dorothea, she has been trapped in the Emerald City her whole life and it's, there's been a curse on her family that uh, one of the descendants is going to pretty much end Oz. And well, somebody comes in with a little trinket uh, as a birthday gift and she's told to make a wish on it and well she does. and. Well, her wish is rather spectacularly bad and you have to be very careful what you wish for because you just might get it and she got it and it kind of screwed up all of the magic of Oz, which has now released her from the castle, but her parents are also disa have disappeared and 
the prince that came to try to marry her is now a beast. <laughs> And it's just, it is so much fun and I, I can't wait to read the rest of the series, which also like takes other retellings and twists them in and oh, I'm so excited for it. So number two on my list is another book that I don't have here in front of me. Uh, and that is Ash and Bramble by Sarah Prinas. And this is like a twisted Cinderella retelling where um if you don't follow along with the story you find yourself in um servitude to the godmother and the fairy godmother and she is she's the bad guy here and it was it was something it was it was really something i highly recommend it um and yeah i want to read the rest of this series okay and i didn't even realize when i was looking at my goodreads I didn't even realize that this was one that I read this year. It seems like I read it so long ago, but I guess it was towards the beginning of this year. And this is probably one of my favorite books, period. It is that spectacular. I love this book so much. I pretty much love everything this author writes. And that is... The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab. Uh, okay, so this follows Addie LaRue and it starts in what year? July 29th, 1714 in France. And she's getting ready to be married off and she doesn't want that. She wants to live a free life and travel and see the world and experience a million things. And... Well, she's always been taught uh, not to pray to the gods after dark. Uh, you're not going to like what you get. And this wedding is ha about to happen. And she ends up running off and running into the woods. And right as the sun's going down, she prays that she can be free of this. And she can, you know, whatever. So, essentially, she makes a deal with the devil. And she gets to live forever. She never grows any older. But nobody can remember her. She can leave no lasting impression on anything. And um, she struggles with this throughout the many years. And uh, has the same relationships over and over and over again. Because the people don't remember her. And she can fall in love. But they won't remember her the next day. Until she meets... A guy named Henry in a bookstore and he remembers her and this story is just it is so good and just so so fantastic I know booktube like talked about this forever ago when it came out and I, I honestly I cannot say enough good I have more than one copy of this too I cannot say enough good things about this book it is fantastic Okay, so those are all 10 of my top 10 books of 2022. Have you read any of them? Did you like them? Did you not? Are there any that you're interested in reading now? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!